Okay, so in the previous couple of videos, what we did is we created a form, and then after we created the form, we added in a little bit of Visual Basic to begin to enforce certain rules. Specifically, we trimmed out leading spaces. So now we're going to build on that Visual Basic script to do even more. The request that has been asked is, can we enforce a rule that says if all the fields are not filled in, then the record does not get saved. In other words, you don't want people to be able to save incomplete records. The answer is yes, that is very, very easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to open that form. We're going to go to View. We go to Design View. We click on the button because that's where the Visual Basic is attached. Here's the event procedure. Click on Ellipsis. And here's the code that we're looking at. What we're going to do is we're going to create a condition. So right now, when you click on the button, this routine runs. Part of the routine is going to be a check. It's going to be what's known as a block if. It's called a block if because it's more than one line. It's a block of code. So let's look to see how that would look. So if me dot, oops, sorry, me dot text one because text1 is the field, the top field that you're typing into. If text1 is less than or greater than two double quotes, then, and after the do command, and if. So like I said, it's a block if. You have a block of statements. So what this is saying is this field, as long as it's not null, then this will execute. And what's great is that if you put spaces, it won't accept that. So let's take a look. We'll save this, close this, we'll save this, click here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to click Add Record. Nothing, no good. It will not save that record. So if we close this, and we go to books game you can see there's no uh, uh, partially created records here so what will it let us do well if we go back to that form and say we type in test it does let us do that so you can still create a partial record you just can't create this empty record so if we go back to books and games see it says test but we know nothing else about it. What's the cost? What's the sell? Is it a book? Is it a game? So let's get rid of that. Actually, let's leave that record so you can see the difference. And sorry for jumping around. It's just access is a little bit weird that sometimes you can't make a change if you have a linked table or another linked object open. So to avoid anything like that, unfortunately, we kind of have to jump around. We kind of have to open and close things. So now we go to view. Design, again, we're clicking on the button, going to that event procedure, and now what we're going to say is, and me dot text 7, which is the other field you currently fill in, and again, less than, greater than, two quotes. And the rest can say the same because you've just increased this condition. Save this, close this, save the form, and now watch this. So last time we typed in test and it would save it. It no longer saves it because now you're saying this field can't be blank. So we'll put in say 500 and now we can add the record. So I could have done that the first time, but this is really an iterative process and I don't want it to be messy the first time to look at. I want to introduce the concept that you're making a check. You're checking to see if these fields are filled in. So here's the first one and it lets you not type this in. This one required a value here. So just like that, you've begun to enforce these rules. But here's the thing. Enforcing the rule helps the database administrator because now you don't have to worry about garbage records because now that I've shown you two fields, you can just keep on going with the remaining fields. You just keep doing and, and, and. 
let's take a look at that before I go any further. So go back to form. So it's just more and more and saying in this field, in that field. But as I was saying, this helps the DBA, this helps the database administrator because you don't have to worry about these garbage records being entered, or at least these partial records being entered. People still might be entering bad data. But the problem is you need to communicate that to the end user. And this is actually a discussion we've been having at work recently about the administrative tools versus the end user experience. And that when you're designing your database, you have to take both into consideration. You have to give feedback to the end user so that they know what they're doing wrong. So in this case, what we're doing is we're just not letting them save the record. And so a very persistent person may just keep hitting that button saying, why isn't it saving? It's broken. Well, see, that's the thing. If you're not communicating to the end user, they have no way of knowing that they've done something wrong. And so what you want to do is you want to start to give information to them. And there's a range of ways of doing that. For instance, right now, this just says, if, then do this. There's absolutely nothing, nothing else that says else, because with an if statement, you can add an else that says, if this is true, do this. Else, do something else. So that's what we haven't done. We haven't put in that else that says, OK, these conditions aren't met. So we want something to happen instead of saving the record, because right now, nothing happens. By using the else, you can say something happens. What we're going to do is we're going to open up a message box, a little window that simply says required fields are missing. And then we'll build on that as far as um, giving more information, information in that message. But again, this is an iterative process. So before the end if, we type in else. And now we put a command in here. This is going to be message box. So msgbox. And we just want this to read required fields are missing we'll save that close that save the form and now we're just going to try to add the record and there's the message box required fields are missing so it helps it's a start but it doesn't give them really all the information they need what they really need to know is what fields are missing. So let's look at how we would do that. So a couple ways that you could do this, you could put the required fields right into that message box, kind of messy and really kind of unnecessary because what I'd rather do is I'd rather have the information be integrated with the form itself. So what you could do is you can make a change to the, to the uh, various fields to indicate that they're blank. So let's go back to view. Let's go back to design view. We'll go back to our event procedure. And I'm not sure why I used a lowercase r there. Save that. And what we're going to do we're going to have checks. So right now we check to see if they're blank. Well, if they're blank, we're also going to add something to uh, the form. We're going to modify the form. Now, this isn't going to be the most concise way to do it. This is going to make it a little bit wordy, but it really shouldn't impact uh, database performance. This is very simple code, so it shouldn't be an issue. But yeah, you're going to see some redundancy that could be done a little bit neater. But again, sometimes I try to do things that it makes it obvious or easy to understand the individual function functions. Sometimes you can do things in a more concise, less redundant way, but it's also more difficult on the eyes. So basically, we're going to do what we did here. And that is we're checking the values, 
but we're going to modify that field based on that. So let's briefly go back to our form. So let's close this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make these labels slightly bigger so it's a little bit more obvious what's going on. So let's just grab a corner to make it a little bit bigger. And let's go to Format. Let's make it bold. And let's give it, let's say, a 16 font. Make it a little bit bigger. And then we'll do the same thing with this one. We'll give it a 16 font. Make it bold. That way it's a little bit more obvious what's going to happen. So we save that. Click on Add Record because, again, that's where the event procedure is attached. And now what we do is we, again, check the value in the various fields, and then we're going to modify the corresponding label. Again, if you want, you could modify the, modify the field itself. Maybe you could change the back style. There's lots of ways you can do this. No one right way, whatever makes sense to the person doing the data entry. And again, this part is for the benefit of the end user, not your benefit. Your benefit is preventing the garbage record, the incomplete record. Their benefit is to explain to them what needs to be done. So we're going to create another block if. So if, and this is really the more proper way of checking for a null field, but it's also a little bit more wonky to look at. So that's why I did the less than greater than. This is how you actually check for null. Is null. And then what is null? Me dot, and we said it's text one. So if text one, that's again the text field you're entering, if it is null, then we want something to happen. We want the corresponding label, which is me dot text. Oops, sorry, me dot label two dot four color equals, and this is old school because you're actually typing out the RGB colors or values, I should say. So RGB, red, green, blue. First value is red, 255 is max. Zero green, zero blue. So what you're saying is that you want the four color of this label to be all red, no green, no blue. And then end if. So now you have another block if. So more proper way of checking for a null value is to actually say, is it null? But again, it's a little bit more wonky to look at. So again, the process is iterative as far as what I'm showing you, as well as how advanced the coding becomes. So you're saying if this text is this text feels null, then change the corresponding uh, the color of the corresponding label. And you probably notice now it's text one and label two. That's why you don't see a text two, because what it does is when you create a new object, it takes that object type and appends the next sequential number. So text one, label two, command three, and it just keeps going. So you don't see text one, two, three, four. You can rename it that way if you want to, but that's the default numbering and naming a convention that Access uses. So if this field is null, change the corresponding label to red. We save that. We close this. Save the form. Go to view. Add record. Sure enough, it turns red. So I'm not sure how well this shows up on your monitor, wherever you're watching this. That's why I made this bold and made it larger so it would be a little bit more obvious that it's red. You could make it italics, and again, you could change the background uh, uh, style of the box, whatever works for you. And you get the warning pop-up box. And the record is not saved. So what you then do is then they can say type in the value and then add record and we make sure that books games has it 
and there it is. Close that, go back to our form, no longer red. So because the form closes out, uh, it doesn't change the, uh, the text, the label, I should say, back to um, the default color until you open the form again. But again, since the form's closing out, no reason, no real reason to. There's no benefit there. So at that point, it's just rinse and repeat. So the only thing to make note of is that this, so the checking of the value for color and the checking for functionality are separate. So again, it's kind of redundant, makes it a little bit more complex than necessary. However, as I mentioned, this is about trying to make it obvious what's being done because it's meant to be a tutorial. This isn't meant to be optimized coding. So I'm sure someone's going to say, hey, you know, you could have combined these. Yes, I could have. But again, this is really introductory. So I want to make it obvious what is being done and when it is being done and what it is, what it's accomplishing rather than trying to come up with this more concise but convoluted um, uh, spaghetti code to begin with. So now we're saying that if that field is no, change the color of the label. And there's really no way to test the opposite because what happens is if it's filled in, you won't even it won't change color because the form automatically closes. But you can just do that. You can just check every field and change uh, the corresponding label to that color to red or whatever. Um, so is that they know that that is the field that needs to be filled in. So I think that's about all we wanted to do in this tutorial. So we're we're giving them the feedback now saying that the field is required so get, they get message box that they actually have to click on OK to proceed. I suppose you could say um, record not saved required fields are missing so again the message box is for their benefit not yours it's for the end user. So let's do that record not saved Record not saved, required fields are missing. We'll save that. And again, if you want to check more fields, you do that. It's just every field that needs to um, be checked, you just add and, and, and. So me.text1, me.text7, whatever the next text is, it'd be and me.text, say, 10, if that's the next one. This trims out the leading spaces, so we already discussed this. This one just drops the value directly in, but what we did with that one is we have the tooltip letting people know uh, not to enter decimals, not to enter uh, a dollar sign, that kind of thing. So I think that's about it for this particular tutorial. Uh, if there's anything else you want to see, just let me know, but uh, that gets us to where we wanted to be, where now we give more meaningful feedback. So both we stop the incomplete record from being added, and we add the feedback so as that they know that it was not saved and that additional data needs to be entered. And we confirmed that those fields were not being saved because we kept going back to the table to make sure it was not there. Okay, so that should do it for this one.